Hello, I'm Fukuzawa from The Best Landscapes Are Found in Books. The title of this video is Incurable Disease, IgA Nephropathy Caused by Hemophilius Parainfluenzae. A specialist from the Japanese Society of Nephrology gives a thorough explanation. And here is the book that I used as a reference, IgA Nephropathy and Hemophilius Parainfluenzae, Toward Elucidation of Its Pathogenic Mechanism, written by Dr. Satoru Suzuki. First, check out the author. Dr. Suzuki is a practicing doctor and has been a counselor of the Japanese Society of Thrombosis and Hemostasis and the Japanese Society of Nephrology. He has been studying IgA nephropathy, a designated intractable disease, for many years and has clarified many mysteries. He has also received research grants from the Kurozumi Medical Research Foundation and medical research grants from the Japan Medical Association. IgA nephropathy is a chronic nephritis that causes inflammation of the glomerulus in the kidney, resulting in hematuria and proteinuria. This video is a must-watch for those who suffer from IgA nephropathy and also for otolaryngologists who deal with kidney and tonsil diseases. To get right to the point, the bacteria that Dr. Suzuki says causes IgA nephropathy is Haemophilus parainfluenzae. First of all, let's take a look at this bacterium, which is described in chapter 13 as follows. H. parainfluenzae belongs to the gram-negative rod family, and its morphology is polymorphic, depending on the environment, and the sites of presence include the oral cavity, throat, pharynx, upper gastrointestinal tract, urethra, and vagina. It is important to coincide with the site of clinical manifestation of acute onset of IgA nephropathy. He further states, H. para influenzae is less pathogenic than H. influenzae, but is the most common hemophilus infection. The main symptoms of H. para influenzae infection are pharyngitis, tonsillitis, and other upper respiratory and mucosal symptoms. The relationship between the two is somewhat clear now. Let's look at the details in the next chapter. Next is chapter 17. This is the story of an experiment on glomerular deposits. We examine the glomeruli of 44 cases of IgA nephropathy and 39 cases of other glomerular diseases using rabbit antibodies against the outer membrane antigen of H. parainfluenzae bacteria. Here are the results. Figure 9 shows glomerular IgA deposits using monoclonal anti-IgA1 antibody in biops renal tissue from patients with IgA nephropathy, showing coarse granular deposits of IgA1 mainly in the mesaginal region. Figure 10 shows the findings of the fluorescence antibody method using rabbit anti-H parainfluenzae antibody in the same glomeruli of the same patient. The mode of glomerular deposits in IgA1 shown in figure 9 and the mode of glomerular deposits of H. parainfluenzae outer membrane antigen were similar. Mm-hmm, it's true, I can see the deposits. This is a great discovery. Dr. Suzuki summarized the results as follows. The detection frequency of glomerular deposits is shown in Table 18. In all 44 of the patients with IgA nephropathy, H. parafluenzae outer membrane antigen was detected in the glomeruli. On the other hand, 14 of 39 patients with other glomerular diseases showed glomerular deposits of IgA and H. parainfluenzae outer membrane antigen was detected in two of them. Glomerular deposits of H. parainfluenzae outer membrane antigen was found to be significantly more frequent. To summarize, Hemophilius parainfluenzae is a possible cause of IgA nephropathy, and the reason for this is the presence of bacterial components in the renal glomeruli of patients. So that's it. Thanks to this discovery, it opened a crack in our understanding of the intractable disease IgA nephropathy. Next, let's look at the treatment. In chapter 36, it says, We focused on the relationship between H. parainfluenzae outer membrane antigen and tonsils to clarify the significance of tonsillectomy treatment in IgA nephropathy. And I'd like you to look at this figure. It summarizes, in three patients with IgA nephropathy who were observed before and after tonsillectomy, a dramatic decrease in serum IgA anti-H parainfluenzae antibody titer 
was observed after tonsillectomy. On the other hand, there was no change in IgG anti-H para-influenza antibody titer or IgM anti-H para-influenza antibody titer. So, the effect of tonsillectomy and nephropathy is either to reduce the amount of H para-influenza outer membrane antigen or to reduce the amount of immune cells that respond to H para-influenza outer membrane antigen, thereby reducing the amount of serum IgA-type anti-H para-influenza antibody para-influenza by reducing the amount of immune cells that respond to H para-influenza outer membrane antigen. Doctor, is this correct? This is a really careful accumulation of research, isn't it? I'm really impressed. The experiment continues. In chapter 37, it is stated that since the effects of tonsillectomy alone on serum IgA, IgG, and IgM anti-H para-influenza antibody titers are clear, we thought we could clarify the differences in the effects of tonsillectomy plus steroid pulse therapy on serum IgA, IgG, and IgM anti-H para-influenza antibody titers. They then measured IgA, IgA1, IgA2, IgG, and IgM anti-H para-influenza antibody titers using cryopreserved sera collected before and after treatment from 35 patients with IgA nephropathy who underwent steroid semi-pulse therapy after tonsillectomy. The results? 1. IgA-type anti-H para-influenza antibody titer in serum was significantly decreased, figure 51. 2. IgA1-type anti-H para-influenza antibody titer in serum was significantly decreased, figure 52. 3. IgA2-type anti-H para-influenza antibody titer in serum was not significantly decreased, figure 53. 4. IgG-type anti-H para-influenza antibody titer in serum was significantly decreased, figure 54. 5. Significantly decreased serum IgM-type anti-H para-influenza antibody titer, figure 55. This means that the therapeutic effect of steroid semipulse therapy is achieved by suppressing nonspecific antibody production, whereas tonsillectomy specifically suppresses IgA and IgA1 anti-H para-influenza antibody production. Besides, tonsillectomy plus steroid semipulse therapy is effective in suppressing IgA, IgA1, IgG, and IgM anti-H para-influenza antibody production. It's been a long story, but I hope you now understand the involvement of hemophilus para-influenza and that the treatment involves eliminating it and suppressing the excessive immune response. Thank you very much, Dr. Suzuki. Well, that's it for this video. How did you feel? If you are suffering from IgA nephropathy, I'm sure you have spent many anxious days due to its many mysteries but I think it's rare to find a book that reveals so much about it. If you want to know more about it, Kindle Unlimited members can read the entire book, so it's a great deal. Please subscribe to my channel and rate the video highly so you don't miss my latest videos. Let's make the best view together. It was Fukuzawa from The Best Landscapes Are Found in Books. Thank you for listening.